Are you as passionate about local governance and municipal issues as I am? Well, then the Cross Border Interviews is your show. We are here to provide you with exclusive insights and thought provoking conversations focusing on municipal matters from across Canada. And now, you have the chance to be part of our incredible journey. By backing our show for as little as $3 per month, you can help us grow and bring more exciting content to your ears. Now, you might be asking yourself, what sets the cross-border interviews apart from other shows? Well, we're not your average show. We dive deep into the unique challenges, successes, and innovative solutions of municipalities from across Canada. We bring you unbiased, unfiltered conversations about municipal issues from coast to coast to coast. By supporting our show, you become an essential part of our mission to amplify the voices of local leaders and shed light on the issues that matter most to our communities. Together, we can foster meaningful change and create stronger, more vibrant communities within our great country. Simply visit our website at crossborderinterviews.ca and show your support today. No matter how small, your contribution makes a significant difference and allows us to continue producing great shows, like the one you're about to hear. Together, let's make municipal issues matter again. Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from all across Canada. Over the course of this episode, we will be learning about who our guest is, what drives them, and how they are working to make their community a better place for everyone who lives there. Now, today we are honored to welcome to the show from the city of Leduc, Alberta, Councillor Lars Hansen. Lars, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Chris. Happy to be here. Uh, so Lars, I'm going to get the first question right out of the bat. And that is, where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? It's a great question. And it's a hard hitting one right off the bat, eh? Yep. Um, <laughs> you know what? I think my sense of duty came from, um, uh, my parents actually, uh, both of them were public servants. They were both educators. They taught at a couple of different schools in the region and that was something that was, you know, taught to me uh, right out of the gates is that there's not a lot of uh, other uh, higher noble callings than than being a public servant, serving the public. Um, so I think that'd be the first piece is um, uh, that that passed down from my parents. The second piece would be that, you know, look, I've I've lived in the city of Leduc my, my whole life. Right. And that that affects people greatly, I think. Uh, you know, I learned how to, to swim at the Black Gold Center before it became the, the Leduc Recreation Center. Um, you know, I learned how to kick a soccer ball in the, the, the fields here in, in Letty Park uh, before I went on to play uh, uh, club soccer in Edmonton. You know, that that attachment to my uh, community and wanting uh, to give back to the community that gave me so much growing up uh, uh, definitely influenced my decision to, to go into local politics. And then the third piece, I would say, is uh, uh, I made the decision that, you know, look, this is a place where I want to raise a future family. Uh, so, you know, having a seat at that table to shape the community uh, and, and, and uh, maintain it as a community where uh, not only uh, that I want to uh, raise my family to live, work and play here, but for other families uh, to, to want to move here and stay here to live, work and play. So I want to talk about your upbringing for a few minutes here, because I want to get to know the person behind the persona that is elected office. Growing up, did you ever think to yourself, if I ever do give back in the public realm, it would be elected office? Or was this something that was just not in the radar? Like, was politics discussed at the dinner table with two parents who were educators? You betcha. That was that was a consistent thing at the dinner table is, you know, they say at the dinner table, maybe not talk about, you know, politics or religion, things like that. But you know what? At, at, at uh, our family, uh, not just our immediate family, but our family gatherings in general, politics was always uh, a, a discussion. You know, I remember watching um, uh, U.S. presidential uh, uh, debates, for example. Right. Um, 
And you know what? I think one thing that's interesting is every school has that one kid that's a little bit nerdy and a little bit into politics. And that was me. Um, yeah, <laughs> you too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you know what? It's I've told a few people the story, but uh, actually a couple of, of council members that I served with first term and, and, and now Mayor Young, uh, the second term as well. Uh, I still remember as a kid begging my parents to take me to that uh, candidate forum uh, for a municipal election here in the city of Leduc, uh, where Mayor Young and uh, Councilor Lazowski, who I, I served with last term, uh, both of them, that was the election where they got elected to, for the first time to city council. I think that was like 04 or something like that. Uh, so it's kind of a, a neat full circle thing where, you know, I saw these people get elected as a kid and now uh, I served with them as well in council. So. So you talk about politics was discussed at the table. It seems like you were driving the bus to the municipal realm politics wise, but was municipal politics something that was discussed or was it more provincial and federal? Because I, I, while I was enjoying politics as a a grand thing in high school and university and college and even in senior uh, public school, I can tell you it was more provincial and federal politics because that's what was on the news at at five o'clock. And uh, we we knew who our local elected officials were, but it wasn't something that I'd be like, yeah, let's 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 go figure out who our local councillor or regional councillor was for you. Was municipal politics something that you had always had an interest in? You know what? So, I I mean, there's, there's a few things there. I, I think the first thing being, uh, you know, at the dinner table, I think it was a, a little bit of everything, you know, okay. and, and, and politics to me, just like uh, my family is it's, it's, you know, while I like sports, politics is also a bit of a sports uh, sort of thing. And, you know, uh, I like to look at all different political leaders, all different political parties and, and see how they're, uh, how they're governing. Um, so I think that's the first piece. And the second piece to it, I think in a, a smaller community like the city of Leduc, uh, you know, you know, these people, right? Like the people that are serving, uh, those are household names in your community that, that, you know, you have one connection to or, or, uh, or another. And I'll give you an example uh, of this. My first term on city council, I served, uh, uh, uh with, with Councillor Terry Lazowski. And it was really interesting because I found out after I got elected with, with Councillor Lazowski that his grandmother actually went uh, uh, to school with my aunt in uh, Wasetna. And it was really interesting because my aunt and uncle were coming to visit my parents one time in Leduc. And so they stopped at Tim Hortons. Uh, and sure enough, Councillor Lazowski's uh, 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 mother was coming to Leduc to visit uh, uh, Terry. And they bumped into each other at the Tim Hortons. Like, you know, it's it's a it's a small community. Everybody's connected in in, in different ways. Um, so I think that's part of uh, uh, the interest in local politics. So I, I, I follow I, I have followed your career since you were first elected in 2017, because when you first were elected, it was kind of a big uh, provincial wide story. A young kid from Leduc getting elected to city council. And I say young kid because traditionally you don't think of municipal politicians being younger than I'd say 40, 45. Um, mm-hmm. But you get elected. What was going on in 2017 that decided to yourself and finally lit the spark said, this is the election. This is the election that Lars is going to put his name on the ballot. Was there an issue or was it just sort of self self serving and saying, I think I can do it this election? Mm -hmm. You know what? I mean, there's a few different things. I think the first thing that that I saw uh, with with uh, the city of Leduc is, you know, I grew up here. I graduated from Leduc Composite High School in in uh, 2011. And, uh, uh, you know, it was a close knit of, of friends there at Leduc Comp graduating. And the reoccurring theme that it seemed like in the city of Leduc is is uh, and I'm sure this is in any uh, uh, um, uh, small town. Uh, you know, folks would graduate and then move off to other places. You know, they didn't see opportunities here and they, they moved, uh, moved away. Um, so I, you know, I kind of questioned why that was. And part of it, I think, was the, the, the lack of representation of younger people in the city of Leduc. So, um, you know, that's where I decided, I think I'm ready to do this. I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, I ran at the age of 24 uh, and uh, I made it at, uh, 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 number six out of six. Uh, so, uh, well, I mean, there's 14 people or whatever that ran, but I was in that last spot there, uh, that I snuck in. Um, 
And, uh, you know, one of the, the first things on the, the agenda that I spoke to my council colleagues and administration about was developing a, a youth council in the city of Leduc to, to give that permanent voice uh, to younger people to advise a, a city council on issues related to young people. Now, I, I don't want to rehash the 2017 election too much, but I want to ask this question because I've, ha- I've had a few uh, younger generation, the sort of the Gen X millennials who have come on the show, and you've been now elected and reelected to the position. Was youth ever a factor in those elections where people said, oh, you're too young? Or did people look at you as a serious candidate? A uh, little a little b, I'd say. You know, uh, it's 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 a it's a bit shocking to see the difference when you go door knocking uh, as a twenty four year old. And you know what, Chris, I'll tell you this: this is what I have working against me, and I still have it working against me to a little uh, to to some degree. Is when I was twenty four uh, and I was door knocking. Uh, you know, I didn't have any facial hair. I still don't have any facial hair, and I looked like I was literally sixteen. Um, and people would say that when I would go door knocking, they'd be like, are you even old enough to, to run man? And, uh, anyways, uh, so that was definitely a a barrier to some degree is people, uh, of course, when you're younger question your, your, uh, your, your ability to serve or your resume. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I, um, uh, we'd have those conversations on the door and, and people would quickly learn that, you know, I, I, I knew a thing or two, right? Um, the second time I ran for for uh, for re-election, uh, that changed a bit, right? I mean, you, you, you're a bit of a household name. People kind of, you know, you have a bit of a profile in the community. So that question came up less. But, uh, you know, there's always uh, that uh, that misconception that just because you're, you're younger, you, you may not know a thing or two, so... You've been on council for almost six years now. As of recording, we're coming up to your uh, second year and your second term. What's been the biggest educational experience for yourself? Because it sounds like you 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 have an eye, eye on politics. You kind of, I would assume, know what uh, traditionally the jurisdictions are, provincial, municipal, and federal. But mm-hmm. for you, what was the biggest eye-opening experience? And do you still sort of feel that overwhelming sense that uh, you are now sort of in the field that you watched growing up and you're with the people you're uh, you were watching at those all candidates forums going dragging your parents to? <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, so to, to answer your first question, I think one thing um that and it, it's with whatever field whether it's municipal government business whatever you got to keep up with the times and so uh one thing that's that's been eye opening um is the evolution of 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 public engagement um and public engagement is is such a tricky thing right um so you know uh, i think we're moving away in general from the the old you know um you have your your little booth at City Hall and you hope people come uh, to you for public engagement um, uh, to more so getting out there and, uh, and and to speaking to people where they're at. Right. So, you know, um, we, we we have electronic surveys um, uh, to get people's feedback, but we also have uh, started a thing where it's kind of like a council chat. You know, we'll go to an event where we'll, 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 we'll take a booth to where people are at uh, and, and seek their engagement on things. So, um so I, you know, I want to pick up on that for a second. I want to pick up on that because you brought up something that is very near and dear to my heart, which is apathy. Mm-hmm. Municipally, there's a big apathetic nature in this country. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if it's like that in Leduc. I, I had the pleasure to sit down with him when your council called the councillor Pollard recently. Mm-hmm. And I think I brought this up as well. But is Leduc engaged? Do people want to give their opinions on the issues that are pre- uh, presented in front of their city or even the issues that are prominent in their city or is it like pulling teeth sometimes and you have to try to go door to door like a campaign and try to get people to give their feedback well you know what i think it it depends on the issue right <laughs> so um and 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 that's the, the 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 beauty of local government i i i think a lot of people say that local government's the closest to the people you know and uh, you're not dealing with uh in my opinion you know sexy issues like uh, foreign relations or or what the economy of the province or country looks like. Uh, but you are dealing with super important issues like uh, water, utilities, um, what type of houses are going to be built beside your neighbors? Uh, what are the parks going to look like? Um, infrastructures like roads, right? Those are very important things and affect people on a day-to-day basis. Um, 
So, you know, if, for example, we're going through uh, redevelop, uh, we're developing a municipal development plan here, right? And um, I think to some people, it, it might be a little bit of an abstract thing. So it, it can be difficult getting feedback on that. But that's a huge, huge thing, right? On the flip side, we, I think, right after the first election, uh, decided to have a pilot project where we were going to close off a gate in South Telford. Uh, it's a section in Leduc. Um, and it would uh, uh, have people redirect them through a, a different way to get to uh, Letty Park, which is all our sports fields, uh, uh, the boating club, the rugby fields, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And we quickly heard from people that that was an issue because that affected them on the day to day basis. They no longer could drive down the same road into that uh, sporting area uh, to to get where they they, they wanted to go. Right. Um, so we heard pretty quickly that people had an issue with that. Uh, and, and, you know, luckily it's a pilot project and we're, we're going to relook at that one and, you know, we'll see where we go with it. But, um, you know, so I guess to, 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 to answer your, so people your question, are engaged, but the they're issue. not engaged as well. It seems like it's very, yeah. it all yeah. depends on the issue. <laughs> Clear as mud, right? Clear as mud, uh, which is a all an ambiguous answer. Which is always good, I guess, when you're clear as mud. But I want to yeah. turn to the the fact that something you just said there. You are mm -hmm. the closest to the people. The decisions you mm -hmm. make on a day to day basis around that council table mm -hmm. affect people the day after. You can't go yep. off to Edmonton. You can't go off to Ottawa to do your job. You are in your community twenty four seven. Yes, you do mm -hmm. have vacations. Yes, you will sometimes leave your community, but for the majority of it, you go to the grocery store and you will see people who want to stop and talk to you. Mm -hmm. How much weight do you put on yourself that every time you go into those council chambers, you're informed on what is being discussed, you're educated on what is uh, sort of prevalent within your community and you understand the needs and wants of your community because if you make a decision you have to go out and sell that decision to your local residents the people who have voted for you and you don't mm -hmm. and you're literally doing it the next day so how much weight do you put on yourself every time you walk into that council chamber i would say a lot um you know the the pursuit of knowledge has always been something that uh uh i i've i've um I've looked at, you know, um, I'm a curious, curious individual. So uh, to your your first part about being prepared, coming into council chambers, you know, I'm that I'm that guy that in my spare time, I legitimately enjoy reading those 300 page reports from our administration. I like to look at what other communities are doing successfully to, to rob and duplicate and bring it to the Duke. Uh, conversely, you know, uh, it's it's also about going out and 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 talking to the public about these new ideas or 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 changing things uh, to ensure that it's the right fit for the city of Leduc or or, or perhaps it needs to be a a made in Leduc uh, approach, right? Um, but uh, it is a, it is a considerable weight, right? Because like you said, you know, it's it's not just the the, the same old Lars where you know I go and pick up my apples at the Safeway. Uh, you know, while I'm picking up apples now, there might be someone that uh, comes up to me, and it has happened in the grocery store where someone's come up to me and uh, uh, asked, "Are you are you still on duty today?" And I said, "Yeah, you betcha. I'm ready to to listen to to you know what concern or issue you have in our community and trying to uh, to resolve it in uh, the best way possible." Is it challenging to weigh the needs of the many with the needs of the few? Uh, to quote uh, Spock off of Star Trek here, uh, like yeah. I can imagine you as, as a city councilor have to look at the city as a whole, but those mm -hmm. individual needs are also important for your community and you have to dissect what all those individual wants and needs are and sometimes not upset people, but sometimes you have to say no to people. So how do mm -hmm. you, as a councillor for the city of Leduc, look at the city as a whole, but not forget the people who have put you there, but also the people of the community who are looking for results today, not five years, 10 years down the line, which municipalities often traditionally try to do is look mm -hmm. at the future of the community, not just today's community. Yeah, well, you know what? It's it's uh, that's the 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 thing about public engagement that I think is is so challenging is um, you know you gotta to, to speak to the individual people and and hear hear about their concerns, but then you also gotta run the the scientific surveys, the the the, the weighted surveys based upon uh, the demographics of the city to get an accurate representation of of what the city's looking at. 
and then you have to the to balance the 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 two right so you know that's something that we do with our 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 budgets is we put out a survey uh and we see uh where people are waiting their 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 needs and wants uh and uh we deliver it as the the, the seven of us here um but uh you know that's the thing is the answer to the question is is public engagement is is going to people in in different uh, uh manners and and uh getting their feedback on on how to uh, uh continue to make Leduc the the great place to live work and play but engagement is great but you have to make the ultimate final decision you have to raise mm-hmm. your hand vote yay or nay on a motion or a budget um do you feel like you can say uh, honestly, and I, I love this conversation because it's just, it, it, you seem like a very open, engaging guy, uh, counselor. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you find that the decisions you make while may not be easy, sometimes they may not go I, like with what the people you've talked to want, because you hear other things that may sway you to one side that some people may say, well, you didn't listen to me and now I'm not going to mm-hmm. come talk to you ever again, because I can tell you yeah. counselors across this country are telling me the exact same things. Yeah. It's hard to yeah. balance every individual needs and you're never going to please a hundred percent of the people a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Well, you know, absolutely. So it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, when you go door knocking uh, uh, from house to house during the election campaign, uh, or you speak at someone at the grocery store, they, they may raise an issue in their specific neighborhood or some sort of kind of niche issue, right? Uh, and uh, you, you finish the conversation with them, you say, huh, that is kind of odd that 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 this hasn't happened or or you know this uh, pothole needs to be fixed, et cetera, et cetera. But you know uh, the thing that I always tell people is you know let me talk to our administration and 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 see where things are at. Uh, and some you know what I've come to learn is our administration uh, has given us um, feedback or um, uh, uh, thoughts on things that are, are, that, that makes sense. Right. And at face value, you know, if you don't hear from them, you're like, that seems really odd, but, um, you know, uh, uh, that's one thing that's, that's really key is, is listening to administration, listening to the experts and getting the best information to move forward. I want to turn to the uh, city as the uh, city of Leduc as a whole. And I want to go back to mm-hmm. a statement that you said literally within the first question I asked you, and it was about the representation on council and you want it mm-hmm. to give a voice to the younger generation because mm-hmm. you, and I'm quoting here, I just want to make sure I get it right here. You said people were leaving, people were leaving that didn't feel like they had things to do in your community. You've been on council for six years now. Uh, I can imagine this has been a priority for you because that's what you mm-hmm. first ran on. How do you think you've done? You know what? Um, you know, there, there, there's been some some wins for sure. Um, for example, here's one that's really cool uh, that we brought in here maybe uh, about a year ago now is uh you know you go to the city of edmonton you go to the city of calgary and you see these all these little you know e-scooters a all around and that's one thing that that we brought in we're trying it out in the city of leduc and uh you know it's one of those things where it's it's uh it's uh you can't beat a weekend afternoon taking an e-scooter around telford lake there's a multi-way there that's a 10 kilometer multi-way uh, and holy smokes, that is uh, relaxing to do that sort of thing. You know, there's been uh, additional uh, businesses that have moved into the city of Leduc where, uh, you know, it's it's uh, allowed for people to uh, uh, have things to do. So, for example, Leduc Brewing Company uh, opened up in our downtown and you can go and have a beer on on a patio and, and relax in our, our quaint little downtown. Right. Um, and, you know, what I would say is at the end of the day, uh, there's a natural development to cities and it, it, it doesn't come down to necessarily one person or one team to, to make it happen. Uh, there's a natural progression of things. And, and Leduc's kind of going through those, uh, I guess, growing pains from being a, a small community to developing into this this uh, mid-sized city that that we are today. Right. Um, and naturally, there's been more businesses, more uh, entertainment uh, uh, that's that's come to the city of Leduc uh, to uh, to give things for for people to do and and makes them want to live, work, and play here. Before I ask this question, I want to preface it by saying this is a conversation between the counselor and myself. This is not a motion of counsel. This is not a direction of counsel. This is his opinion. Uh, mm-hmm. Lars, in your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing the city of Leduc today? 
The biggest issue, I think the biggest issue is, is, is a very long-term thing. And that's the, um, the, the long-term funding from the higher levels of government, the province <laughs> and the federal government. Uh, we, uh, you're speaking my love language, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, you know what we, as municipalities, the, the buck, uh, was always passed to us where, you know, there's, there's uh downloading of responsibility to municipalities. Uh, and we don't have the, the diverse, uh, sources of revenue to, to keep up with those, uh, increasing responsibilities. Um, so, you know, the, the provincial government, the current provincial government uh, has has announced that they're looking at changing the Municipal Sustainability Initiative, MSI, to uh, the LGFF, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, there's some good and there's some bad that comes with that. Uh, but uh, that's a conversation that um, as a representative from the city of Leduc uh, that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to chat with our provincial government about because, uh, and I know the Alberta municipalities is doing a great, great job in terms of advocacy for, for municipalities, but um, you know, uh, the long-term uh, sustainability of municipalities across this province depend on uh, a collaborative relationship between municipalities and the province and the federal government. So. Correct me if I'm wrong. Leduc has their own police force, or are they RCMP? RCMP. So you just got a big giant check, a bill from the federal government as well, then I'm assuming, because while you talked about the provincial government, the federal mm -hmm. government is also downloading onto municipalities as well, right? Yeah, yeah. And we, um, uh, you know, the RCMP have, have served the, the city of Leduc uh, well. You know, we've had them for, for, for quite a while. Uh, we just actually added uh, uh, um, some space to our protective services building. Um, and, uh, you know, I actually found out, I didn't know this, I found out uh, a few days ago, uh, this year is the 150th anniversary of the RCMP. So, um, You talk about the funding, the fiscal framework that municipalities are mm -hmm. dealing with right now. You're not the only municipality who's dealing with this issue, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. I can imagine it's hard at budget time when you have a budget that comes in front of you and the provincial government and the federal government is asking you to do more with less, even mm -hmm. your municipality, because we all understand inflation happens. How do you look at the budget process and how do you as a counselor make sure that the budget that you pass is going to have the least amount of effect on the day-to-day -day people out there who are struggling to get by right now, because we know mm. that Canadians from coast to coast to coast are struggling with the high cost of inflation and municipalities mm. are doing their best to try and not have any negative effects on their residents. But we all understand that inflation does happen and cost of business does go up. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? The one thing uh, that the city of Leduc has uh, uh, going for it relative to a lot of other municipalities, and and I think a lot of uh, other municipalities would be uh, and are envious of the city of Leduc, is our, uh, our our tax split. So uh, we have a sixty five thirty five between residential and and industrial. Uh, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. So the the Leduc. <laughs> I know Business one that's like booming. ninety ten. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know. It's it's uh, our, our our budgeting is a little bit more sustainable with with all that uh, uh, commercial growth. And, uh, you know, we we, we had a, a funding announcement, I believe it was a, a year ago from the provincial government for the 65th Avenue interchange, which will open up more land for commercial development uh, and, and help uh, build that split. I think uh, the, the internal goal is kind of a 60 40 split between residential and uh, 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 commercial. Um, but uh you know that's a that's a big piece to it is is it helps build a more sustainable city when we have that dependable tax uh, base. Um, but what does uh, a sustainable you know, the city mean to you? Because it's a word that whenever it comes up, I need to ask the question: What does a sustainable city mean to uh, Councillor Hanson? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think this uh, a sustainable city to me is is um, uh, uh, and I look at that in a in a fiscal way, right? that we have the money uh, coming in to not only pay for uh, uh, growth, but also keep up with amortization of our, our assets, right? So 
Um, you know, the, the city of Leduc, I got to give credit to our administration. We got a great, great team here uh, in the city of Leduc that uh, has looked at uh, various different things. So, for example, during budget time, we look at our 10 year capital plan. Uh, we, we, we continue to do a, a we, we did a, a 50 year growth study to, to, to plan how the city of Leduc is going to grow and ensure that when we're planning this city, uh, it's not just residential. Uh, it's residential and commercial to, to create that uh, sustainable uh, tax base. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's what sustainability means to me. Um, and uh, uh, but, you know, I, a key piece of the Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say know, a key think, piece. Yeah. Continue. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. You know, a, a key piece to me, though, is is, you know, we can't do it alone. Right. You need to have diverse revenue. And part of that, uh, and I can't remember what percent of our our, our, our budget or our revenue is, but uh, a big piece of that is is um, funding from the province and the federal government. I want to go back to a statement that you made a little bit earlier before you turn to the last segment here and start wrapping mm -hmm. up. I want to turn to the personal and public life of a counselor. You've been in the position for almost six years now, and you, you kind of joked that you you went to the grocery store and people approached you and said, are, are you still on the clock here? Um, you and I both know that a counselor's clock never stops. You, mm -hmm. you get paid to basically be at those council meetings, end of sentence. And you get to go to some uh, public events, those are volunteers. Those, those are volunteer hours where you get to go and celebrate your community. You have to answer mm -hmm. questions from your community. Have you found the balance, the right balance between public life and private life as a municipal counselor? You know what? And that's that's one of those things where I, I'm a strong believer in continuous learning. And, and that's a piece of it is is that that, uh, you know, even today, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to find that that right balance. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, it's it's always nice to, to have a, a little bit of a getaway uh, to the mountains or uh, go visit Sylvan Lake or something like that uh, to, to just be Lars. Right. Um, but, uh, you know what, uh, a piece of it is, is, is the passions there, right? Um, I'm a people person. I like talking to people. I like talking to people about the issues. You know, I've, I've told a number of people where they, they maybe have emailed me or, or messaged me on my, my council social media, you know, instead of, instead of talking over the computer, uh, let's, let's grab a coffee. Let's have a phone call, right? Uh, uh, it's just a better way of, of doing business, a better way of, of understanding people and, uh, if there is a gap in understanding to to bridge that gap and find a uh, you know an understanding between people, but um, you know that's that's it is is it's sometimes tough to find the the balance between private and public life, but uh, the passion's there. I love doing it. It's uh, it's uh, it's an absolute honor to to have the 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 opportunity to come here in council chambers on Mondays and. You know, all we have to do here is find three friends. That's the saying. You just got to find three friends and you can make a big change in your community tomorrow. So I want to turn to my last seg segment, and it is one that I am very passionate about, and that is tourism. I love tourism. Mm -hmm. I love coming to communities. Uh, you and I have made a, basically a, a friend date to uh, grab a coffee while I'm in Leduc later on in July. Uh, well, by the time this airs, we will have hopefully already have already met, but you betcha. What are some of those coffee shops or those uh, hidden gems in your community that, as a tourist, I should mm -hmm. go see? Uh, well, you know what? I got to say, our downtown is phenomenal. It's uh, it's it's an interesting thing, you know, because with a community like like the city of Leduc, you know, uh, we're a fast growing community. Um, and there's urban sprawl happening. And sometimes when you have that urban sprawl, you 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 hollow out your your uh, historical downtown. And that's something that uh, I, I give a lot of credit to, to past councils is uh, past councils and, and, and this current council. Uh, we've made, uh, uh, you know, investments into our downtown to uh, ensure that we, we have a sustainable downtown um, that, you know, businesses want to locate there. Unique businesses want to locate there. Uh, so to answer your question you know there's there's a there's a few really great spots downtown i mean there's probably too many to name but i'll just name some of my favorites um you know the leduc brewing company brand new uh made in leduc uh beer uh gotta enjoy that uh the leduc coffee shop great place to, to have a coffee and uh, a cinnamon bun on uh, an outdoor patio um 
there's a really, really great uh, Filipino restaurant, Rennery Mart downtown, uh, where they have uh, it's kind of a mix of a, a grocery store and a, and a restaurant there with with Filipino uh, food. Um, yeah, you you name it, man. It's it's there's there's so many places. It's hard to uh, to, to to limit to just a few, but that would be uh, some of the highlights for sure. So where do you go after a stressful day, after a long day of work, after a long day of council, after a council meeting where you just want to go decompress? Where do you, where can where could we find Councillor Hansen Lars in the city of Leduc? Is there a brewery? Is it the Leduc Brewing Company or is it like many other municipal councillors mm-hmm. that I talk to your home? Yeah, well, well, you know, uh, <laughs> definitely my home for sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of great stuff on Netflix. But, um, you know, my two favorite places is to do decompress at a, at a green space. So uh, two of our absolute crown jewels here in the city of Leduc is, is Telford Lake. You know, that's the first one. Uh, there's a 10 kilometer multiway there that, uh, you know, there's there's two uh, wetlands uh, that we've redeveloped uh, uh, from a grant from the provincial government um, that are really cool to see around Telford Lake. Uh, there's uh, some uh, signage talking about the flora and fauna of uh, of, of the Telford Lake area. Uh, you could take an e-scooter around there if you wanted um, to, to see it. And the, the unique thing I think about Telford Lake is, is it stretches outside of Leduc. Um, well, it's in Leduc, but it's it's outside of all the industrial, commercial, residential development. So you, you really feel isolated when you're out there and you can decompress that way. Um, the second one is is Fred Johns Park. Uh, definitely a smaller um, uh, uh, park. But the, the multi-way around there, there's the disc golf, which I know you love. Uh, you can go for a barbecue out there. You can take the kids to the playground. Uh, it's uh, we, we have phenomenal parks and green spaces uh, in the city of Leduc. I'm actually coming up, uh, like I said, we'll be hopefully meeting. But uh, I have a friend from Nova Scotia, and we're going to go do a round of disc, disc golf at, uh, in Leduc. So uh, it's going to be fun. Right on. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But I want to end on this question, and I, I, I know we started the interview with a tough question about duty to serve, so we're ending on a equally important tough question. In your opinion, what makes the city of Leduc such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? You know what? I don't want to be corny, but I'll, I'll be corny. And, and Do and it! It's, it's, <laughs> Everyone uh, else has me! <laughs> <laughs> it's the people, you know, uh, uh, and, and there's this, I guess there's this trend, whether it's, uh, you know, Cochrane, Duke, St. Albert, it's, it's, it has this small town feel, uh, but it has all the amenities of, of a, a bigger city, uh, you know, and you talk to the people, and it's like an episode of Corner Gas, I tell you, man, people know each other, uh, people wave to each other, say hello, and and in the uh, in 2023, I think that's sometimes hard to find um, where uh, people, when they're walking uh, on, a, on a multi-way, they walk up to you and say city of Edmonton or city of Calgary. And, and you might not get that wave or that small interaction with them. But in the city of Leduc, you, you, you definitely will. Um, it's a, it's a hospitable community. It's a welcoming community. It's diverse. It's inclusive. And uh, uh, there's there's no better place in, in this country to, to live, work, and play, in my opinion. Counselor, I want to thank you so much for the bottom of my heart for coming in and sitting down with us today. Not coming in, but jumping on to a, a call and uh, taking uh, my questions. It's always great to hear from municipal counselors who are so passionate. So thank you so much for being part of your community, for serving, and for being uh, a, a representative that people can look up to, especially in today's world. So thank you so much. And thank you for Chris for for having me. It was an absolute pleasure uh, pleasure to talk about uh, my role as a counselor and uh, the city of Leduc as a whole. So with that, I want to remind everyone: put down your cell phone for at least ten minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society, helps our democracy. So with that, we'll be back tomorrow with another great episode. Till then, just keep talking.